Hello, I'm Jack Reedy with Future Pastimes, and I'm a designer on the expansions for the 2019 edition of the classic Dune board game from Gale Force 9. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the special treachery cards, and that is Family Atomics. How does it work? What does it do? Some nuances of the effects. Um, have you been playing it incorrectly? We'll get to all of those things and more as we talk about uh, one of the most amazing and unusual treachery cards in the game. So, what does Family Atomics do? Well, in a nutshell, it lets you blow up the shield wall. Spoiler alert. So, uh, why is that important? Well, the shield wall protects Carthag, Arakeen, and Imperial Basin from the effects of the storm. And the Imperial Basin part is, uh, it's a desert territory in between those two strongholds that a lot of people forget uh, is safe from the storm for as long as the shield wall is intact. So an important thing to remember, make sure that you've been playing that correctly. Um, but once the shield wall has been destroyed by Family Atomics, uh, the storm will destroy any forces in Carthag, Arakeen, and Imperial Basin. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, more about that in just a minute. Uh, so, how does it work? Well, you need to actually have forces either on the shield wall territory itself or adjacent to it in order to destroy it. And it's actually better to be adjacent to it, all things being equal, because any forces that are on in the shield wall territory itself, when Family Atomics is used... Uh, those forces will go to the tank. So you don't necessarily have to sacrifice your your forces if you are adjacent to it. And I personally, I like to have my forces, um, first of all, I like to have them, uh, some forces adjacent to the shield wall, uh, irrespective of whether or not I have family atomics. It's always good to make people think that you have it. It makes them nervous about uh, going all in on Carthag or Arakeen. Um, or having a lot of forces in there, they may hedge their bets, uh, especially as the storm gets closer and closer to those territories. But uh, when I do, I actually like to have my forces in Pasty Mesa. And Pasty Mesa is a territory that spans three sectors. It's a really large territory, one of the biggest in the game. Uh, but you could actually have your forces in Pasty Mesa uh, close to Tuic Siege, and it actually looks like you are maybe staging to invade that stronghold. And sometimes players don't uh, notice the fact that you are technically still adjacent to the shield wall, so that you may uh, blow up the shield wall using Family Atomics on any subsequent turn in the storm phase. So um, if you don't necessarily want to get noticed, that's a good place to go. Uh, if you're, uh, you know, at certain other territories, the only reason to be there of course, is you're adjacent to the shield wall. So it does send out a big signal. Um, but like I said, I, I like to do it even if I don't have the card. Now, you can't play Family Atomics on the first turn. I and mean, really the only way that could work because you have to play it in the storm phase uh, would be if the Bene Gesserit were playing advanced. This was their starting card and they chose to put their first starting force in a territory adjacent to the shield wall. Uh, but it does specify right there uh, on the first line after the first turn of the game. So it, it can't happen on turn one. It can happen on turn two, and it can be pretty exciting uh, having no shield wall starting on turn two because forces, they have to move in and out of Carthag and Arakeen as the storm gets close. Arakeen, of course, has conveniently has a nice rock territory adjacent to it, the Rimwall West, um, that they can just move into and then move right back in on the next turn. But you have Ornithopters in Carthag, you can certainly get to safe territory like the Polar Sink or Plastic Basin, um, but you would need to then ship into Carthag or Arakeen on a subsequent turn in order to have enough movement to get back into Carthag. So it can be tricky, tricky to have the shield wall destroyed uh, when that happens. Um, so after the storm has been calculated, then you can play Family Atomics. And the storm is calculated in a couple of different ways. If the Fremen are in the game and you're playing advanced, they have the storm deck, so they will reveal the uh, the, the card that uh, shows how many sectors the storm is moving. That is how the storm is calculated. Uh, and before it actually moves, you would uh, blow the, the shield wall. Uh, the other way that it is calculated is uh, the last two players who have handled the battle wheel, so it's whoever was in the last battle, or if there are no battles, whoever dialed the first storm during setup uh, will dial one, two, or three sectors each, so the storm will move from two to six sectors in basic 
or in a game where the Fremen are not in the game. Um, and of course, weather control uh, can be can be used as well. Um, so here's a here's a little nuance about uh, family atomics and the storm. So let's say that you have forces in Arakeen uh, and the Imperial Basin, uh, which again, Imperial Basin is a is a desert territory that's safe from the storm as long as the shield wall is intact. Uh, so your forces are in those two territories, and and the storm is positioned on that sector. So it's there. Uh, you're protected because the shield wall is fine, uh, but then somebody plays family atomics and the shield wall is blown. What happens to those forces? Well, they're dead. They go to the tanks. They've been wiped out by the storm. And some players uh, actually don't interpret that way because of some, uh, you know, the, the wording in the rule book uh, is ambiguous enough. Uh, and, and that's because it talks about uh, when the storm uh, moves over a sector that um, has forces in it, that's when they're destroyed. So the assumption for some players is that the storm has to actually move. Uh, but that's really something that I kind of blame on uh, Bill Eberly, um, teasing him a little bit. But if you don't know this, Bill is a poet and has been for many decades. Uh, he loves to harness the power and the magic of the English language. Uh, which sometimes gets uh, away from us, and I'm guilty of it as well, and, and so are uh, Peter Laka and Jack Kittredge, who have been writing rules for decades. We sometimes uh, lose sight of the fact that th it, just the littlest nuance of language can open up uh, a lot of rules in games to various interpretations. It's why um, the, the FAQ is as big and as muddled as it is, um, but the reality is um, those forces are in a sector under storm. Uh, it doesn't matter if the storm has moved or not. They're there. They have no protection. They are destroyed. They go to the tanks. Um, so you're not having to wait to go, oh, you know, good, good, it's a good thing the strong winds blew that storm out just as we lost our protection. No, that's not it. Arrakis is a harsh environment. You gotta understand that that and those forces are destroyed. So let me know in the comments first of all, uh, one if you have been playing it um, the right way or the wrong way. Uh, two, let me know for how long you've been doing it that way. And three, let me know if you intend to start playing it the correct way or if you will dig in your heels and keep playing it uh, the way that you've always played it, even though it's wrong. Um, that I'm certainly certainly interested in hearing more about that. Um, so that is, uh, by and large, the, uh, the effects of Family Atomics. I think it's an amazing card. It's wonderfully, uh, thematic. I remember the first time I was playing Dune back in the 80s when this happened. Somebody had played Family Atomics and then somebody else played Weather Control and then the storm swept through those sectors and it wiped out so many forces. And in my memory, we all kind of cheered because of just the chaos and magic of the moment. Uh, but the reality is that probably the players whose forces had been wiped out uh, either didn't cheer or not very loudly. Um, but for me, it was magic because it was, it felt like it was ripped right out of the book. Again, spoiler alert, but um, it, just the fact that this can happen in this game is one of the things that I think makes Dune an amazing game. Uh, you don't see that every day. Uh, and this doesn't happen in every, in every game. A lot of times, uh, nobody plays Family Atomics. You might not even get the card, uh, to, just depending on how long the game goes on, whether or not you've got the extra treachery cards from the first expansion. Um, and then you you may have this card, but you have forces in one or both of those strongholds. You certainly don't want to see it get blown. Um, so it's going to take up some room in your hand, but at least you have control over whether or not it will happen. Um, and once it is played, it's not discarded. It's actually removed from the game. Um, and you can set it, you know, next to the board as another reminder that, uh, boom, it's gone. The, uh, the game comes with the cardboard token that you can place over the shield wall to indicate, yes, it's been destroyed. If we have the Barnes and Noble version of the game, like I do, you've got a nice little, uh, mushroom cloud token, which I've painted mine. Um, I love having this on there, a permanent mushroom cloud over the shield wall, um, to commemorate its destruction. Um, 
Let me know your thoughts on family comics uh, and any uh, amusing or interesting uh, stories uh, of its use in your games in the comments. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.